Welcome to the Radical Truth Podcast. I am your host, Glenn Meldrum, and this podcast is brought to you by In His Presence Ministries. Visit us on the web at www.ihpministry.com. Happy New Year. I'm just going to give a short, pungent devotional that will hopefully make some of you rejoice and possibly others repent. I'd like to begin by asking you a very important question. What did you do on New Year's Eve? Did you do what was pleasing to God? Or did you break his heart through the practice of evil? I'm astounded at how many people that claim to be Christian act like the devil on New Year's Eve and then justify their wickedness with worthless excuses. The verse I want to share have both a wonderful message and a terrifying judgment. It comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9-11, through 11, and these verses are of extreme importance, so it would be good for you to grow familiar with them. They read, Do you not know that the wicked will not inherit the kingdom of God? Do not be deceived. Neither the sexually immoral, nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor male prostitutes, nor homosexual offenders, nor thieves, nor the greedy, nor drunkards, nor slanders, nor swindlers will inherit the kingdom of God. And that is what some of you were. But you were washed. You were sanctified. You were justified in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and by the Spirit of your God. Verses 10 and 11 are a brief summary of the evils that are practiced on New Year's Eve all over this country and all over the world. What people do on New Year's Eve is a revelation of their moral and spiritual condition. It's not a one-night event alone. What's inside of us will always come out of us, and this is true for what people do on New Year's Eve. When people act out what's evil, they are only manifesting their true spiritual condition. In the list of sins that Paul wrote that I read a moment ago, we find a lot of sins that define the whole party scene, whether New Year's Eve or not, such as drunkenness and sexual perversion of all sorts. Paul made it very clear that those who have been washed in Christ's blood and are being sanctified by the Holy Spirit don't practice those sins. Holiness is an expression of those who have truly come to love Christ and serve Him with all of their heart, mind, soul, and strength. Paul wrote these verses both in the present tense and past tense. The present tense applies to all those who are still in the practice of sin while the past tense relates to those who belong to Jesus and are no longer in the practice of sin. Those who are still in the practice of sin aren't genuine followers of Jesus, no matter what people say or even what the church says, while those who are true disciples are overcoming sin through divine grace and their love for God. I know people who claim to be Christian, but when New Year's Eve comes, they throw off all restraint to party with the world, get drunk or high on drugs, and then end up in bed with somebody. Such acts prove that people don't know Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Those who are saved by grace overcome sin, while those who practice sin don't have the true grace of God working in their lives. Let me share a few verses with you from the Apostle John to support what I'm saying. In 1 John chapter 2, verse 4, he wrote, The man who says, I know him, but does not do what he commands, is a liar and the truth is not in him. That's pretty strong. This plainly states that all those who claim to be Christian but are in habitual sin don't know Jesus as the Lord and Savior no matter what they claim or how many lies they believe. Because people claim to be Christian doesn't mean that they are the real thing. Jesus told us that we will know a tree by its fruit. A good tree bears good fruit, while a bad tree bears bad fruit. Those who are true followers of Jesus bear the fruit of the Spirit as outlined in Galatians chapter 5, while those who don't belong to Jesus bear the fruit of the sinful nature that is also in chapter 5. Then John wrote in 1 John chapter 3, verse 6, No one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. When people continue in the practice of sin, they are given proof that they don't know the Lord. They are bearing the bad fruit of the works of the flesh. The proof is obvious. Those who went out to party on New Year's Eve knew they were going to be doing things that were hostile to God and contrary to His Word. 
They went to places that Jesus would never want them to go and did things that he has forbidden them to do. When people do such things, they aren't stumbling into sin, but they are running after sin. Then in 3 John chapter 1, verse 11, the apostle wrote, Dear friends, do not imitate what is evil, but what is good. Anyone who does what is good is from God. Anyone who does what is evil has not seen God. According to what the Apostle John wrote, those who claim to be Christian but deliberately practice sin don't know Jesus. At this very moment, the Lord is offering all those who are in the practice of sin a chance to turn from their sin and cling to Jesus. Godly sorrow brings about life-changing repentance that transforms the life and character of those who are truly surrendering their life to Christ. This is why Paul could say that that is what some of you were. They once practiced sin, but are no longer doing so because they have been totally revolutionized through divine grace. How does this change come about? When people truly repent of their sin, then the Lord cleanses them with his atoning blood that is more than enough to forgive sins and deliver people from the practice of sin. There's no sin that Jesus can't forgive, but he won't forgive those sins that people refuse to repent of, which means that they must turn away from the practice of sin. Paul wrote in the verses we are studying on the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, which changes people from the inside out so that they stop practicing the sin they once chased after. In place of the love of evil that once defined them is the love of God that changes the whole direction of their lives. And finally, Paul wrote that we are justified, which means that God removes the guilt we incur from the practice of sin so that we can be clean and holy before our good and loving Savior. Those who grow to love Jesus will love bringing joy to his heart through loving obedience. Self-professing Christians that are in the practice of sin prove through their actions that they don't truly love God and that they aren't going to heaven unless they allow Jesus to revolutionize their life. But those who turn from their sins will find our Lord's forgiveness and will come to know a love that's so pure, holy, and all-engulfing that to forsake the world becomes easier by the day. If you have been in the practice of sin, your only hope is to surrender yourself to Jesus, ask his forgiveness, and then abandon your life of sin to completely and totally follow Jesus. Jesus clearly taught that you can't serve two masters. You cannot serve Jesus and sin. If you are in a church that isn't preaching the truth and is justifying worldliness, such as drinking and gambling, then you need to get out of that church as fast as you can. Your salvation may depend upon it. Then find the most on-fire, Holy Spirit, Bible-preaching church that you can find and get yourself plugged in there. Jesus is worth the pursuit. Thank you for listening to The Radical Truth with your host, Glenn Meldrum. We at In His Presence Ministries pray that this weekly podcast will be a blessing to you. Please tell others about it and subscribe yourself to this free podcast. Don't forget to visit our website at www.ihpministry.com. See you again next time, and may God richly bless you as you seek Him in spirit and in truth. So come wash in the river Come drink your fill Let healing waters Bear away your gift